Uh, got it. Okay. So hopefully one of these will. Um, he'll be able to get in. Okay. I'm going to give him a call and see if he got in. Hello, Dr. Thank Hopper. you. Hello, Dr. Hopper. How are you? Recording your progress. Dr. Hopper, can you hear us? Can you hear me? You, your, your, your mic is muted. I don't... Hey, how is everyone? Can everyone hear me now? I can yeah, hear you. I can hear you. Yes, and I can. You. Can everyone hear me? Yes, yeah. Dr. Hopi. Excellent. How is everyone? Great. Good. Is everyone is ready to move forward on the breath? Yes. Okay. Now we have exciting seminar today. What we want to look at because we're now are going into the fall. We're gonna be going into the fall. And you wanna be able to understand the breath from a seasonal perspective. You wanna understand the breath from a perspective of how do we use this breath to get through the seasons and not get sick. So we start out looking at the breath as an element. The, the breath does something. This, this breath is doing something every day. So what? So if I ask all of you all, what do you all think the breath is doing most? I mean, we know it's giving us life. That would be definitely the most. But what do you think it's doing after that? Can can I can I can I get a raise of hands? Can I get a raise of hands? Can I see everybody get a raise of hands? Cool. Everybody exciting to tell me what the breath does next? It now, gives you energy. Well, it gives energy, but I'm gonna I'm only gonna give 10 seconds to answer this. Whoever answer it will get an A for today. It Whoever gives, answer. It's sending oxygen through the body. Yes, but that's not what I was looking for. There's something else I'm looking for. It heals the body. That is great also, but it's something else I'm looking for. How about stabilizers? It does that also, but it's something else I'm looking for. Okay, the 10 seconds is up. It creates fire. Uh, oh. It creates heat. Without heat, we cannot live. The breath is, it's a pump. It's a compressing pump. And it works in terms of creating heat. So how do we know it creates heat? How do we know the breath creates heat? Well, how many of you all have seen a basketball lately with LeBron James? Mm -hmm. Is he sweating? Yeah. Well, he's sweating because the breath created heat. Is he breathing more than normally than just sitting? Do you think we're breathing as strong as LeBron? 
No. No. So he is compressing his lungs every time he exhales. He's compressing the lungs, and the ancient called it pneumo. Pneumo is a word that means a compressor. It's a compressor, and it's compressing the lungs, it's compressing your diaphragm, and it's creating heat. So it's this heat that we need in the fall and in the winter. It is this heat that will keep the microbes away from us. If we do not create enough heat, we will start getting congestion. So how does the congestion show up? It shows up as dampness. Dampness show up because we do not have enough heat. So the dampness comes from what? Where do you all think the dampness come from? Any answers? It comes from the food we eat. The food we eat is broken down into four different elements. The food that we eat is broken down into air, fire, water, and earth. We talked about this in, in the last meeting. You all remember, remember that? Yes. You all remember yeah. we talked about the four elements? Yes. You said, these four, you said air, fire, fire, water, and what else? Earth. And earth. Okay. okay. And earth. Got it. And, and if we don't keep these four elements in balance, we are going to lose the fire. And when we lose the fire, the blood is going to get cold. When the blood get cold, there is not enough oxygen in the blood, and they call that you have a cold because the blood got cold. Now, if the blood gets too cold, the microbes are going to multiply. Mm -hmm. And if they multiply, how will we know? You will be getting a cough. That cough is your lungs trying to work overtime to get the fire back up. So how can we get this fire up? How can we get this fire up itself? There are different ways we can get the fire back. How um, can we by, get this fire up? By eating foods that give us by fire. Eating what? Foods. By eating what? By eating okay. alkaline foods. Al foods. Alkaline. Okay. Yes, alkaline foods. So who said that? Who said said that? that I know, I know Christy. I know Christy said that. Did you say that, Christy? <laughs> we missed you last week, Christy. I'm, I'm, I, because you be coming up with some answers. We missed you last week. Yeah, I missed y'all. You know, my dad was in the hospital for four weeks. So yes, yes. Well, I'm, I hope he's doing better. So, so, yeah. so, good. So anyway, this fire, these foods that we that we have to consume, we have to become very efficient in how we consume these foods and we have to be very efficient in the foods that we're going to consume because the goal is is to get the fire back up as quick as possible that's the goal and if we if we know how to do that then we will be able to stay healthy during the winter during the fall and during the spring and in these three times particularly in the cold periods the cold periods would be those times we would want to be able to get the fire back up because the goal is to keep the oxygen moving the goal is to keep the breath up the goal is to keep the breath strong where the breath can keep producing the fire so how many of you all have been doing the breathing exercise that we went through the last the last two times? How many of you all have been really working, doing that every day? I have. Every day. I every, have to. Okay. Every day, right? Okay. Every single day. Uh -huh. And how has that been working for you? Has that been working pretty good? Yes. For me, yes. For me, too. Okay. And, and so how do you feel? How do you feel from, from doing it? It more gives energy. me more energy. Yes. Uh-huh. 
Same here. More uh -huh. energy. More mm -hmm. energy. Okay. And what else? What else? It, there should be some other things that you feel. What What else do you feel? Regularity. Regularity. Regularity is what we now must focus on. Regularity is what we must focus on because it's the regularity that we're going to lose if we do not keep these four elements in balance. What is going to happen is our systems are gonna slow down if we consume too much earthy foods. And when the system slows down, the oxygen is gonna decrease. When the oxygen decreases, the blood is gonna get cold. When the blood gets cold, our body has to give us warning. Well, the first warning is congestion in the lungs, that's the cough. The second warning is we will tend to be constipated, which means the earth has dried up the water in our colon. And then third, we will start not feeling well. So in this first, we need to have fire foods. We, we need to know how to move through these seasons so that we stay in balance to be able to stay healthy and vital. So we need fire foods. We talked about fire foods last time we were on here. Did we talk about fire foods? Not a lot. You all remember? You all remember if we talked about fire foods? Yes, I think yes. so. Did we talk about some? Yes. What fire foods do you all remember we talked about? Red onion. The, the what now? Red onion. Red onions, what else? What else do we talk about? Did y'all talk about mushrooms. the leafy green stuff? We talked about green stuff. What else do we talk about? Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Mushrooms, yes. Mm -hmm. What else do we talk about? Seaweed. What was that? Seaweed. We seaweed. did talk about seaweed. We talked about seaweed. And sea moss. Sea moss. So, so let's be very particular. Let's be very, very... Exact. The most important fire foods that we need when we are losing the fire is we need the foods that produce fire. Now, if I tell you, I want you to find me some foods that are yellow and citrus, what would you come back with? Oranges, yes. oranges, lemons. Limes, Limes, ginger, right? Ginger, ginger, right? Butternut squash. Uh -huh. Say bananas. Butternut. Mm -hmm. Bananas. Well, bananas wouldn't bring us fire as much. Bananas would be more earthy. That wouldn't bring us fire as much. It would be more the oranges, the lemons, and the limes. So in the fall, we need to be consuming more of that. Because they, what do they, those all have in common? And vitamin, and vitamin C. C. Vitamin C. And it's the vitamin C that we want to be able to consume. The vitamin C is what we want to be able to consume. Okay, the vitamin C. Now, this vitamin C... There's another way we can get it. What is the other way we can get it? Taking vitamin C. Mm -hmm. vitamin. Right. How many of you all start taking more vitamin C in the fall? I do. I, I, how, I how do. much? How much do you take? How much? I take a thousand um, thousand. milligrams a day. Not, en not enough. I not take enough. Uh, not not enough. enough. I take thousand. three, 3,000 a day. 3,000 is a little better. Because I have that autoimmune. But let's say, let's say we're starting to get stuffy. We're starting to get stuffy, which means we're eating too much earth. How much should we take then? 10,000. How much? 10,000. Yes. 10,000 should take 3,000 three times a day because you need more fire to offset the earth that's putting the fire out in the blood. And so you need that so that it can bring the balance back. Because what happens when we consume the earthy foods, 
they tend to put out the fire. And when they put the fire out, we are going to get cold. And when they say you have a cold, it is that literal. We, the blood has gotten cold because the fire was put out. So what else can we consume to get the fire? What about ginger? Ginger is excellent. And what about many, red onions and yes, cilantro? Yes, red that would be good. Pepper. Yes, but how many of you all drink ginger in the fall? I drank ginger all year long. In well, in the, the summer, it'll make you hot. In, in the, the summer, air. drinking ginger did. will make you well, it, it's good for digestion. So I drank ginger tea like every morning and I drank turmeric too. Turmeric will help too. Yes, yes it is. Yes, it will. And it is and very good for digestion. How many of you are remember ginger ale? Yes. yes. How many of you all drank ginger ale before we even heard about ginger tea and ginger root? How many of you all drank ginger ale? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. And if you're from the islands, you probably have the real stuff. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So the ginger ale, the ginger ale is what we will be looking at. We will be looking at the ginger ale and the ginger ale. What's in the ginger ale? Ginger. Ginger. What else? Sugar. Sugar. Oh, repeat that. Sugar. Now, what do the sugar do? Put the, Put the fire, fire out. out. It puts the fire out. So here, someone's drinking ginger ale. They're getting the ginger to bring the fire in, and the sugar is putting the fire out. So that's why you just get your own ginger from the store and mix it that's with a tea or however you want to do it. So how many of you all are doing that? How many of you all are buying ginger root and making ginger tea from ginger root? How many of you all are doing that? I do. I just bought a ginger powder. <laughs> I just it. what? About the ginger powder. Well, the ginger powder would not be as strong. No. Yeah. It's no. not as strong as the root. Mm -hmm. Because no. the roots still have the compounds, the active compounds in there that's going to make that ginger hot enough so that it's going to heat up the blood and it's going to help digestion. Well, what is it? What is it digesting? It's digesting the earth. And the earth is not digesting well, so the earth is creating dampness, which is creating mucus, which is causing the body to lose the fire and causing the, the, the blood to become what we call ana, anaerobic, which is anti-aerobic. The blood oxygen drops, and this is where the microbes multiply. So our goal is to keep our bodies so hot that the microbes don't even have a chance to multiply on us. Are we hearing that the COVID is coming back again? Yes. The COVID never left. It never left. So, <laughs> so just the other day, some friends of mine called me and said they had got the COVID and that they were very sick from the COVID. Now, if we are getting vaccinations, it is Noah. Come here. If if we're getting vaccinations, and we're getting booster mm -hmm. shots, Talk but we're eating too much yeah. Earth, then we're still going to get sick. Because yeah. if we eat yeah, too much earthy that. foods, I'm the reading. colon is going to slow down because somebody it's needs become... to shut their mic down because we can't hear Doctor Happy. Please. Thank, thank you, Christy. Please. I apologize. That was me. I didn't realize I had it on. I'm sorry. Okay. I have my Thank hand. you, Renee. Okay. Thank you, Renee. So we must, we must get enough of the fire in so that we can do three things. First, move the colon. We must move the toxins, the earthy matter out of the colon because it has dehydrated the water out. And then when it dehydrates the water, it then takes the fire out. And when the water and the fire is taken out, you cannot produce air when there's dampness in the lungs. We learned this from the COVID, all the people that had the problem. So we want to look at the foods that we can consume that will help us keep the fire up. 
the Thai people at their restaurant, they have a food called Tom Yum Soup. All of them know about it. Anytime, anytime you get congestion, if you went to a Thai restaurant and you were coughing, they would, all of them would be pointing at you, say, she needs Tom Yum Soup. All of them know this. Well, what's in the Tom Yum Soup? Garlic. Is garlic hot? Yeah. Well, Have you yeah, ever eaten I'm a piece of garlic that was so hot that it made your ear start burning? That you had to rub your ear? Yes. Yes. And your That's stomach the, too. Your stomach too. That's the fire. So they put garlic in there. They put onions in there. They put lemongrass in there. They put ginger in there. And they put peppers in there. So whenever you even feel congestion, stuffiness in your lungs, what should you be going to get? Tom Yum, Tom Yum, Tom Yum Soup. Yum. You, can look, you can look on Google's and look up Tom Yum Soup and you will see the recipes. You can make it yourself. So what you want to do is you want to be looking at your lungs every day, first thing in the morning to determine what do I need to eat today? Because if you ate some earthy food yesterday, so what do we say earthy food is? Earthy food is what? Bread. Meats, bread, meats, bread, meats, bread grains, grains, rice, uh, right? Pasta. Right? Starches, pasta. All those are earthy foods. Well, what else might be considered earthy? If you were to eat some cheese, what is cheese made out of? Milk. Milk. And what, what do yeah. it turn into? What mucus. do cheese turn into? Before mucus, it turns into bacteria. Ooh. It turns <laughs> into bacteria. You're literally eating bacteria. Mm -hmm. And when you eat it, if you eat too much of it, it puts your fire out. Well, what do the Hispanics do? They eat hot, 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 hot peppers to melt that cheese so that it does not put the fire out in their blood because the cheese is a fat and that fat slows down the movement of your blood. It stagnates the movement of your blood. And when your blood movement is stagnated long enough, your blood is going to get cold and the microbes are going to multiply. So what about oregano? Oregano. Oregano. Oregano is good. Oregano is good. How about how many of you all have heard of olive leaf? Did we not talk about that? Yeah. So how many of you all got some olive leaf? I do. Where did you get it from? I have I some too. It. I ordered it from the herb store. Well, here uh, in Chicago, we are very lucky. Here, here in Chicago, we have we have a store called Larrabee's. It's in Elmwood. Mm -hmm. They've been in the herb business for over almost 100 years. Mm -hmm. Three different generations. Any herb you can think of, they will pretty much have. Mm -hmm. So they have the herbs to help. And then Whole Food have an herb called Smooth Move. Now, oh, yeah. what do you think that what do you think that herbal formula going to do? Make it's called pepper. smooth. What do you think it's moving? It's going to move stuff out of your system. Toxic. The earthy stuff is going to yeah. move the dry earthy stuff out of your colon very smoothly. And when what? it moves it out, the first thing you should be able to tell the next day is that you can breathe a little better. This is what we're supposed to be checking every day is our breath. What about the the olive leaves? How do you take that? Is it comes in capsules or it tea? It comes or? in capsules. It comes in capsules. Refer, okay. What right. about it, Dr. Uh, Happy? Because uh, sea moss and the minerals that you, if you make that, that also moves you very well. It does. Oh. It does also. But how many of us are getting sea moss? After we talked about the sea moss, how many people on here are even taking the sea moss every day? Oh, I, I didn't know how you I make I didn't know how I'm you moss and put it in my smoothie. I'm taking oh, wait, 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 wait now. Wait, hold up. I shouldn't open it up like that. That was good. <laughs> Everybody, I hear some people are taking sea moss. This sounds good. Now, Sister Shirley, 
Yes, did sir. You the, did you get the mango sea moss or the pineapple sea moss from Sister Lisa? I did, but I but I'm doing something called sea nutrients that I get from Chinatown. Okay. okay. I drink and, it every morning and every night. And that's been helping too. That's oh my been helping God. too. Good. It's, uh, it's there, wonderful. There's so many brands of sea moss. Which one's the best one? Well, this one that Sister Lisa make is organic. Right. See if you if you buy sea moss off a shelf at a at a store like a whole food store or whatever, and you open it up and you leave it in the refrigerator inside of two months if it's not organic, I mean if it's if it isn't organic, it's still gonna be okay. But mm -hmm. if it's organic, it would have spoiled. Oh, it will have oh. mold on it. Mm. That's how you know is it organic. And this is what Lisa she makes sea moss like that and she makes delicious sea moss she makes a pineapple and she makes a pineapple mango so and the sea moss has the compounds to help your bones it help it helps the constitution of your body the nutrients that sister shirley walker is talking about it helps the constitution of your body because from all these earthy foods they weaken our constitution and when our constitution is too weak we're going to lose our strength. That's why people feel sick. They feel weak when the constitution is draining out of their bodies. Their bodies are losing the fight to be able to hold on to their oxygen and keep the blood healthy. Well, what else? What else can we consume? What else can we consume that would help to give us that fire back? Water. Water? Well, what's in the water? <gasps> That's Alkaline. right. Alkaline. Oxygen, no. alkaline no. water is oxygen, but it's extra oxygen. It's yeah. extra, it's a higher level of oxygen. And this oxygen helped the blood cells to clean the earth out of the body quicker and to get the upswing of oxygen so that the body can feel vital quicker. In fact, there's a water test that I do that I show you how these different waters how they work in the body and how the alkaline water, when it is the purest of the alkaline water, how it has a higher frequency on the pH scale. And that higher frequency will help your body to get the vitality back into your body quicker. But I was thinking of something else. I was thinking of iron. How many of us consume iron? When the blood, when the blood becomes cold, it has lost its iron. And when the iron is out of the blood, the blood is now weak. The blood is not vital, it's not rich anymore. So what foods can you consume for the iron? Spinach. Greens. What? The what? Greens. The greens. Okay. Kale. Now what's the what else? Kale. Well, that's the greens. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Some of the, that's some of the greens. Now what's yeah. in there though? Spinach. Spinach. So, spinach. But what's in there? What is in there that's doing chlorophyll. that? The chlorophyll. chlorophyll. And the chlorophyll helps to create the iron that makes the blood come alive again. So whenever you feel your nostrils starting to clog up, what should you eat? Some greens. Yay. <laughs> and garlic. And onions, because it's going to give you roughage. And it's going to help push that earth out. And the next thing you'll be feeling is the stuffiness leaving. You'll feel your nostrils opening up more. And then the ginger, it'll heat up the blood. You'll feel warmer. So when a person's blood gets too cold, the body starts to create chills and fever. The chills is telling you the blood has gotten too cold. The fever is telling you that God is trying to heat your blood up indirectly. He's trying to heat it up because he sees that you've lost the understanding to keep the balance. So he comes in to help you. He sends the fever. And if he sends enough fever, what may happen? You could die. Your blood, your blood and your oxygen can stop in the brain. There will be too much heat in your brain. So that's why you have to make sure when you start getting too hot, you got to check your temperature. 
It is very important because if you don't check the temperature, your brain will heat up and you will pass out and die. You will be so weak. You It'll be like a heat stroke in the summertime. Mm. It'll be like a heat stroke. It can kill you. So you have to make sure that you are drinking the what? The water to cool down the fever. If you That's have to, you might. Yes. Have you heard of Kagan or Kagan water? K A N G E N Kagan. I uh, it comes out of a machine. I have three of them in my house. Oh, I have one on every floor. <laughs> a, a health food store here in Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee has this. It's the black go uh, and buy it. Go and buy it every day, but then buy it the machine, so you will be saving money in the long run. But go buy that water. Okay. And drink okay. that water. Don't drink no more water from your tap. Oh, okay. We'll do. I just because that to water from the tap has chlorine, and chlorine is bad on the heart. It's bad on the heart, the chlorine. So, 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 so let's look at these four seasons. We step into this into the fall. What should we be eating now? What should we be eating? We should be eating soups. We should be eating soups. Why should we be eating soups? Because the soups will have more water in it. Well, what kind of soup first? Tom Yum soup. <laughs> what kind of soup second? Soups that are broken down like bean soup. How many of you all have ever been to a Muslim restaurant and they serve you with bean soup. How is it prepared? It's blended up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's blended up. It's not whole beans. It's blended up. And when it's blended up, it has enough water where the beans won't clog up in your colon. So what, what kind of soup, what kind of bean soup would be the easiest to blend up? Or that could break down the best. How about lentils? Do you all eat lentil beans? Yes. Mm -hmm. How about split pea soup? Do you eat that? Yep. Yes. How about minestrone? Do we eat minestrone? Mm -hmm. Could we put a little extra cayenne pepper in there? Make it a little spicy. Could we put a little extra garlic in there? I do. A little extra onion in there. Could we put a, a little extra... A little extra cayenne pepper in there. Can we put some ginger in there? So should we be eating soup now every day in the fall? Yeah. Yes. Every day. Ooh. Every day. I just Did happened you... to make chicken vegetable soup today. Did you add garlic? Of course. Did you add cayenne pepper? No, I can't do cayenne pepper. <laughs> now, some people cannot. Some people cannot do cayenne pepper. I see Dr. Cato smiling over there. Can you do doc? Can you do cayenne pepper, Dr. Cato? Huh? No, can I you can't. do? Can That's you? I'm like you and my aunt. Can't do it. Yeah, can, I, I, for, yeah I'm like for allergic. Some, for some people, it irritates the, the stomach too much. Yeah. So, in a case like that. In a case like that, what you would do is you buy some buffered cayenne pepper peels from the health food store that's buffered okay. where they don't heat up. It'll give you the heat, but it won't heat you up. Okay. Buffered cayenne pepper. They call it cool. cool. They call cool. it cool cayenne pepper. So you have crackers with that and cornbread with the soup? You yeah. can, but you got to check your breath the next morning. <laughs> because if you eat the cornbread and you all stuffed up, what you going to do? Oh, drink more water. You're going to drink some ginger tea for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So what else can we do? Let's say, let's say we're now moving into the winter. What else can we do in the winter that could help us to get out of the problem where we're heading toward a cold. What else can we do in the winter? Because let's say we let's say in the fall, we, we didn't take care of the body too good. We ate too much earthy matter, too much earthy food. We ate too much pasta, ate too much bread. And now we're all stuffed up, ate too much meat. We're stuffed up. 
What else can we do to, to make sure we move the colon? How many of us have ever had a colonic? I used to get them all the time before COVID. Yeah, I used to get them. But well, the how died. come we still don't? You have to find we'll a place to do that. Yeah, I don't have kind of hard after COVID. Can't well, now we but now the people are getting out and about. So could we? So how many of you all have ever given yourself an enema? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not getting a lot of responses. Yeah, <laughs> only for <laughs> But I to keep my colon moving, I do green smoothie cleanses like every 14 days. You do what? Green smoothie cleanses every 14 yes, days. Yes, yes, yes. That would that's be another like way a, to do it. That's like that a would, colonic. Yes, that you would said, be another way green, to do it. Green smoothies. So green. while I'm mm. talking to y'all, I have mixed greens. I have cucumbers. Mm -hmm. I have a little bit of lime. Um, I also put a little bit of moringa in there. Uh huh. Uh huh. And so, um, for a little sweetness, I'll put a few little blueberries in there. But I do green smoothies. That is my natural colonic. Yes, that would yeah. do fine. Now I want you to I put that on the chat. Put that in the chat. Yeah. yeah, Christy, Please. put that in the chat for everyone. I have because, one every morning. Yes, every morning. Every, it's good every morning because here's the thing: I was trained by swamis from India, and the swamis taught me how to give myself an enema. But when they give themselves an enema, it's like a colonic. They take mm -hmm. almost two quarts of water in the colon. They hold the water in the colon and they flush against the walls of the colon. And every mm -hmm. time the pressure builds up, they had a technique where you press your chin into your chest and it releases the water into your colon more Ooh. until the water gets all the way over to the right side. Ooh. And when the water is all the way in the colon and you didn't flush your colon where your colon, you didn't flush it so strong, you hear the water slushing around. And when you use the washroom, it's like a colonic. Mm -hmm. The sphincter becomes very strong. So I was mm -hmm. trained by them. So anytime I even think my, my, my breathing is becoming clogged up, I'd give myself a colonic at home, a personal enema that is equal to a colonic. And it would flush me out and make my body feel better immediately. But also, I, oh, yes, Sister Brenda. Well, I was going to say I used to go to Eco. She was an Asian woman. She used to uh -huh. do it for the hospitals, and she would give you the colonic. Yeah. She would sit there and drink tea while she gave you this colonic, and yes. uh, and a shiatsu massage afterwards. Right. And how did you feel after? How did your lungs feel? Um, amazing you felt amazing light airy when you left there yes yes this is what we're talking about we can get so much healthier doing these different practices so that we can be well throughout the winter we could be well in the spring we could be well in the fall now when do you think most people are going to die from the cold do you think they're going to die in june or you think they're going to be dying in December, in the winter, in the middle of the winter, in, in the February, winter. starting in November, all the way through the spring. Mm -hmm. the yes, yes, because mm -hmm. they're not understanding how to keep the fire going. But here's the thing: the fire itself is even more stimulated from the breathing. That's why I'm stressing the breathing to us, because. When you learn how to do this breathing correctly in 10 breaths, you could break a sweat Yeah. without running. Is that right, Sister Shirley? That is right. In 10 breaths, Sister Shirley has done it on my table. In 10 breaths, broke a sweat. And that means she has heated up her colon. She's heated up her blood. That's the only way you can break the sweat. You are heating up your blood, which means you are strengthening your immune system 
and strengthening yourself from the microbes. They cannot, the microbes cannot come and get you if your blood is hot. That's why when the athletes were tested positive for COVID, they had no symptoms because their blood was kept so hot running up and down the court. Now, are you all trying to be running up and down the courts? Mm -mm. How many of you all want to be no. running up and down the courts? I kind of do. Yes. <clears throat> what what did I, you say, Dr. Cato? What did you say? I kind of do. <laughs> well, now, I, I, I'm not going to hold that against Dr. Cato. I really align with her. Thank you. However, how many of us are going to be running out in the wintertime? It's not None of us. No. Not too many. <laughs> not too many. So, so that's why the breathing technique that I'm talking about is critical. Because in the winter time, we could be in our nice warm house, doing the breathing, <laughs> heating up the blood, and protecting ourselves from the microbes. Now, today, I'm going to take us deeper into this breathing because it's critical to understand the power that this breath has and to understand how we are in control of making sure that the breathing is gonna protect us. So I wanted to go to a picture of the lungs today. I wanted to show a picture of the lungs before we go into some breathing today. I wanna show this picture of the lungs. Now, let's see here if I can pull this up. I'm going to hit share. I'm going to bring up this picture. And I want to see if everybody can see this picture. Can everybody see this picture? No. Can everybody, can everybody oh, see the black. picture? Now. 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 Everybody can see it? Mm -mm. Yes. 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 I can't see it. It's on the screen. Yeah, I can see it. Can most of you all see it? <laughs> yes. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I see okay. It. Okay. So this picture is showing a picture of the lungs. Can everybody see it now? How is that? Can I you see, see it. it now? It is a, okay. So so if we look at the lungs, you you see that you see that the lungs have a left and a right lung. You see that we have the upper chambers and the lower chambers. And mm -hmm. when we are doing the breathing, what is the most important part of the lungs we should be working on? What is the most important part that we went over? We, we talked about this. The inhale. The diaphragm. Well, well, the inhale, the inhale is important, but I'm saying in the parts, there's the, the three parts of the lungs that's the most important is the lower part of the lungs where lungs. the Avioli yeah. is okay. That's where the pleura is. Pleura, and if yeah. you look to on the right side, you'll see pleura and pleura space. That's where the lungs need to be breathed the most. That's where the cough comes in. And then we have the bronchi. You see where it says the right bronchus, the left bronchus, and you you see where it says the bronchioli. You see that on the left yeah. side, right? The bronchioli right there at the bottom is showing in the lungs where the bronchi is. So mm -hmm. these bronchi, the bronchi is what we are working on when we're breathing. We're working on the bronchi mm -hmm. and we're working on the alveoli. So the alveoli is where the lungs carry the most oxygen for that's where the dampness comes. That's where the mucus comes. That's where the congestion comes. That's where the cough is coming from. And so we have to every day go down into that area to find out how is our lungs doing because in that area if you look on the right side at the bottom where you see where it says mucus do you see that where it says mucus in that it looked like a cup shape. yeah it says mucus yes. then it says the cilia and it says the cells so in yeah. that area that's where the congestion is being created now we have the opportunity to de decrease that mucus. Well, how do we decrease the mucus? We must make the breathing strong enough to decrease it by creating fire. We must take it on the fire elements of the foods that we spoke about because that 
mucus is coming about because digestion is not being completed. That mucus is being is coming about because we're letting too much cold get into the lungs. Well, where do the cold come from? How many of you all go out in the wintertime outside? I do. Yeah. How, I many, do. You, how many of you all how many of you all put a, a scarf on your face? A wool a wool scarf on your face. How many of you all do that? I do. Uh -huh. yeah. All of us need to do that because when you are outside in the cold, you're breathing in the cold air. It's making your lungs cold. Yeah. And when your lungs get cold, your lungs are going to create mucus. Yep. And so we need the scarf across our face to breathe through the scarf, just like when we had the mask on when we had the COVID. And that will help to keep our lungs warm when we're outside. Because the goal here is we must keep the lungs warm. We must not let the cold come in. There is something called, it is called thermal exposure. Mm -hmm. And in thermal exposure, there is something called hypothermia. Mm -hmm. And hypothermia is when you are out in the cold and you get too much cold in your lungs you're going to use up all your vitamin C immediately. You are going to expose your body to those elements and the elements are going to weaken your lungs and it's going to eliminate your fire. You could get a cold just from being out in the cold. Yes, I believe that. So, so, so it's essential to protect yourself by having a warm woolen scarf around your nose any time you go out there. But what else could you do? What? How do you dress? How many of you all put a coat on when you're out in the... Dr. Dr. Happy, I always wear a hat because you lose a lot of your heat out of your head. And if yes. you go through your ears, y'all you, in Chicago should be wearing earmuffs. We do. Socks, well, I'll, I'll speak for myself. I, I will speak. I will speak for myself. I have ear. I have a a wool cap on, I have earmuffs, I have a scarf. Plus, how many of you all wear fleece clothing? Yep, mm -hmm. I love the soft, yeah. Fleece, yeah. fleece clothing is a very soft, light clothing that will keep the cold from the wind from entering into your body. Yes. So mm -hmm. if we dress like that, and you can be layered, you can have three or four Layer. sweaters under the fleece top, you will stay more warmer than yeah. if you had a coat on that have you all bundled up. Yeah. Because yeah. the fleece and the sweaters will keep your body layered like if you are out there on one of those ski slopes. And you will do so much better, especially if you have a hat on, you got your earmuffs, you got your your your, yeah. your face mask, you have your scarf, you have your gloves, even... They have these warmer, they have these, they, they're chemical. You you pop them and they start heating up. It's a chemical heat up. You yeah. can put them in your gloves. You can put them in your Yeah, feet. Dr. You Happy, but people with heart conditions and hypertension, they have to be careful with those. That is true. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the healthy people here. Is everybody healthy on, on this? Yes. <laughs> on here. If you're not, if you're not, we you need to see me. I, I'll, because, share, I'll share something that I learned. Okay, uh, Sister Shirley. So uh, Canada has these shoes. They're called, the name of them are P-Jaws, P-A-J-A-R. P-Jaws. And uh -huh. they work in temperatures 30 below. Do they? So I wear Put, them all. You have some. Winter. Yes. Put I that in the chat. Put that. We all need to get some boots like that if we're in a cold area. Your feet. If you put that in the chat, socks. and they keep my feet warm. Put that in the chat, Sister Shirley. Okay. Now I hope I'm not too loud for you all because I do get excited. Am I too loud for you all? Not no. at all. No, sir. No. I get kind of excited about this. Okay. Put 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 that in the chat, Sister Shirley. Oh, yeah. We want everybody to be highly protected in the fall, the winter, and particularly the winter, because that's when most of us are going to die. And mm -hmm. so we want to be what? What did I talk about the last time 
when we spoke. What what kind of car do we want to be? A Rolls Royce. A Rolls Royce. Do Rolls Royce break down? No. In the time? Do you see them broke down on the highways? <laughs> Never witnessed that. So that's what, and the, to become a Rolls Royce, we must take on all of these different dietary <laughs> principles and these principles on how do we carry and how do we prepare ourselves so that we are quite comfortable. We want to be like an Eskimo in the winter. Yep. Mm. We want to be comfortable inside with the heat by taking in the ginger. Anytime we go out in the cold, we should uh, we should have a, a glass of ginger juice or we should have a cup of ginger tea to warm the blood up going outside. I do it all the time. My blood be nice and warm when I go outside. Mm -hmm. So we must embrace a lifestyle. Now, I do want to share this. I want to share this. I want to share this. This is a statement. This is a statement that, that is said for those who are in the know. Now, what I'm saying is all of us have to become in the know. I'm, I'm going to read this. What we are trying to do is fine tune the breath. That's what we're trying to do. We're fine tuning our breath, like fine tuning an engine, like tuning up an engine. And this, this paragraph reads like this. It says, the exo, the exoteric message. Exo means the knowledge that everybody knows. The esoteric message was one comprehensible to the people at large and was expressed in terms of various rules, forms, and rituals corresponding to the basic need of the people and the age concern. Parallel, parallel with this was the esoteric teachings. These were the hidden teachings. These the general public did not know about. Esoteric means hidden. These were the hidden teachings. And these are what have survived through the ages, partly as written and partly as unwritten living traditions. So we're talking about traditions, which are what we are, we, we are, are, are assuming, we are, we, are, we are embracing, we are embracing different traditions that's going to protect us. And this is what the general population don't have. So you all have heard of Puff Daddy. Puff Daddy. You all heard of Puff, Puff Daddy? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> is yeah. he rich? Is Puff Daddy kind of rich? A little rich or yep. sort of rich? What you think? Very rich. Very rich. Very. So would you say he's he's wealthy? Would you say he's kind of wealthy? Yeah. Do you do we have a do we have enough money that he could go to any hospital in the whole world? Yeah. Well, his 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 mama's ba his baby's mama got sick with the flu. Mm -hmm. She went to the doctor and she got some antibiotics. But she did not know about this knowledge I'm sharing with you all. Mm -hmm. At 48 years old, she died. <gasps> mm -hmm. Now, do you think Puff Daddy would have spent the money to put her in any hospital if they had known about this? Because she had the antibiotics, but she didn't know about the eating. She was still eating the earthy food that was making the blood cold. She was still eating the cough, and it took her took her her breath away. It took her life away. So what I'm saying, we are learning the esoteric teachings. These are the teachings that the average person will not know, yeah. and so the average person will be in danger in the winter. They will expose themselves to the cold. They will get the coldness in their lungs. They will come in congested. They will get sick. They will take some antibiotics. And they, if they still eat wrong, they will die. So now, we are not... Are, is anyone on here trying to die here soon? No. no. Absolutely not. How about in the next... In the next uh, 60 days. Anybody trying to die in the next 60 days? How about the next 120 days? Mm -hmm. 
No. How about the next two years? Anybody trying to die in the next two years? No, no, no. Everybody no. on here, we want to be in the 100-year club. Mm. Mm -hmm. So to be in the 100-year club, our lungs must get stronger. We must live this lifestyle of these secrets so that we will be protected more than the general public. So I love it because we're going to have our own little club. We're going to all be 100. So the gonna... Rolls Royce 100 <laughs> Club. It's going to be called the Rolls Royce 100 Club. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody at 100 is still going to be vital. Everybody at 100 will be should be able to outbreathe LeBron James and Stephen Curry any day of the week. <clears throat> I had some of my 88-year-olds show up. And any day of the week, they will embarrass LeBron James and Stephen Curry where they will bow down to my 88-year-olds. How would you all like Stephen Curry and LeBron James bowing down to you all? Yes. I'm telling you all, please teach me your secrets so I can be vital like you and make it to 100. So getting back to this drawing of the lungs... We want to work on our lungs today so that we are in the alveoli and in the alveolus, we want to affect the capillaries and the pulmonary veins where they are moving more blood in and out. We want to dry the mucus up in the lungs. We want to check the lungs every morning to see where is the cough reflex and we want to strengthen the cough reflex so that when we exhale, there should be hardly any coughing because the lungs are working so well in the alveoli. So we are going to see where is our lungs today. Now, everyone said they've been practicing every day. Is that correct? No. Almost. Not correct. No. Uh, almost. Yeah. Yeah. Almost. Now, now, are we are we having some? Six days a week of practice or five days a week? How many days? How many days? About five. Who gave us six? How many people gave us seven days? Raise your raise your hand. Raise your hand on here. How many people yeah. gave us seven days? Our bride. Hey, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna get rid of this. I want everybody to raise their hand who did seven days. Let's see how many did seven days. Okay, we got two. It's been a month. That mean we that would mean how many did the 30 days since I talked to you last? Okay, we got three. Yes. Okay, how many did how many did six days? That means you might have did 20, 24 days out of the month. How many did six? Did we get some hands for that? Yes, how many did five? How you do that? How you do that? I, I, I don't know how to raise my hand. Me neither. Let's oh, good, it. good. I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. I, I feel better now. It's what you do is you you go down you go down to, re, to, to reactions. Go down to reactions and you hit the thumb up. Ah, or you hit okay. the hand in reactions. I got it. I got so it. should I see a lot of hands now? Yeah. I don't see the hands though. I don't see all the hands. How many did it four days a week? Dr. Miller, I don't see your hand. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dr. Hoppy, I am not engaged. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So can we see your hand if you did it four days a week? How many did it three days a week? I'm not going to go to two days a week. I, I, mean, I, I don't, don't want to say ask how many did it two days a week because that's almost like we only did it on Sunday, <laughs> on the Lord's Day. <laughs> so to be in the Rolls Royce Club, we have to say we're going to do it every day. We have to. Because in the Rolls Royce Club, we are the breathitarians. We are the breathitarians. Now, I'm not saying that we live on breath alone, but breath is our most important source of energy. Doctor, so I missed some of your I missed some of your days. So you do it twice a day? Or how many times you do it? We can we can do it twice a day. We can do it three times a day. Or how long? Um, ten, you only ten do it for 12? ten times. You're only doing it ten times. Ten, 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 is that right, Sister Shirley? 
Yeah. Do we do 10 strong breaths to check the lungs? Yeah. To help strengthen them? Yeah. That's awesome. And the first three, do we go down into the alveoli and check to see if the cough reflex is working right? Do we help to strengthen that up so yeah. we can get more fresh blood down there? And then we go to the bronchi. The next four breaths are in the bronchi. And the last four breaths are in the upper bronchi. And when we do that, Every day we're strengthening the lungs and we're heating the lungs up. When we do this correctly, do you know what we call this? Building the preventilator. <laughs> you all hear that? Building the what do they? What did they call when one was on COVID and went into the hospital and they put them on the ventilator? Mm -hmm. So if we're going to be Rolls Royces, we have to build a what? Of the preventilator. I like that. So that we don't have to be put on the ventilator. Yes. So to build the preventilator, we must do this breathing every day. If you ask Sister Shirley Walker, how is my breath? How strong is it? How do it sound? And what would you say, Sister Shirley? Do it sound strong? Yeah. And you're, but, and you're standing up. And don't. I'm standing up. And when I go into those three breaths down into the lungs, do you hear any coughing going on? No. no, because the lungs are strong, which means I'm protected from the COVID. I had some patients during the COVID time. I was very, I, I was very in danger of getting the COVID. Guess what? I didn't get it because I had a strong preventilator. So we're going to see how everybody's breath is today. Would that be okay? Dr. Cato, I know you're ready to do the breathing. I know you said, I'm going to show Dr. Hoppy. Let me be the one to show. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we're going we're to do the breathing. I like that. I like that in you. I like that in you. I love that in you. So so now let's let's do some breathing. I want to hear, who, who want to show up and show out? Who want to show me a Rolls Royce breathing? Now, I know you can do it, Sister Shirley. So I'm not going to ask you because I know you. I know you can do it. I know you can do it. You will come out with that. Who? Now, Christy. Let her be our example. Come on. Help her motivate See, Now, Sister Shirley, they're calling you out. <laughs> they're calling you out. You got, you're going to have to show up and show out. You're going to have to show up. All right. I'm not you laying wanna... down. I'm sitting up. Okay. Okay. Way. We. Okay. But you can still do it sitting up. You can show right. it sitting up. Okay. okay. Okay, and you all listen to her breathing now. She's going to do the first three deep in the lungs, in the alveoli, deep in the alveoli. Okay. Okay, now you all listen closely. She's going to inhale through the what? Inhale through, through the, the nostrils. Through the nostrils, through the nose. Yeah. The ancients call it the pyramid. They call this the pyramid, a center of power. The pyramid means fire in the middle. So the nostrils are supposed to ignite the fire in the middle to keep the blood warm. Okay, Sister Shirley, we listening to you now. Okay. Go ahead. The floor is yours. Can everyone hear her? No, I think your your speaker is off, Sister Shirley. Yes. Uh -huh. Was it off? Yeah, yeah your speaker on. is off. Yeah, your speak. Okay, try it again. Let's see if we can hear. Okay. Can't hear. You, we we can't hear, can't hear Sister can't Shirley. Hear right no, we. I mean, I see your mouth opening, so I know, I know, the sound is coming out, but we couldn't, we couldn't hear you. I got my, um, I got it all the way up. Up, you got it all the way. Up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So, you so have it, to do it. It means it means like it's giving you a way out, even though I know you <laughs> was gonna get an A. Oh, I, you, I, I know want, you were gonna get an A, Sister I Shirley. didn't want a way out. Nope. She sounds good oh, now. Oh, 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 now I have to do it. I'm glad I'm ready. All right. Now, everybody, tell me if you can hear me. Did everybody hear that? No. No. Nobody no. heard that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. At all? Oh, you didn't hear you. 
Did all you all you did was inhale, right? Yes, I was inhaling. Out? Did everybody hear that? No, I haven't blown it out yet. Okay, that right. No, so did no. everybody hear my inhale? No. no. Hmm. Okay. Well, tell me if you hear my exhale. Okay. Mm -hmm. No. I heard the beginning of it. Yeah. Right, let me get closer. Let me get closer. So then that's why you couldn't hear me. Why? Right. Okay, let me try it again. Okay. Did everybody hear it that time? I still mm -hmm. ain't hear anything, Dr. Happy. Oh. Hmm. I'm, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get my external <laughs> Christy. Yeah I heard you do it again, do it again, sister Christy. Go ahead, go ahead, do it again. Did everybody hear her? Yes. That yes. was good, Christy. Mm -hmm. Do it again. Do it one more time. Do it one more time, Christy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We could hear that, correct? Yeah. Yes. yes. That was pretty good. You get an A, Sister Christy. You get an A too, Sister Shirley, even though we couldn't hear you. <laughs> I, you too. I would your, love, mouth, your mouth I was would opening. Love to earn my grade. But your mouth was opening, and uh, I've so had we you up need close. Everybody in this group to get an A because mm -hmm. we're getting ready to come in some tough times. So we need everybody so to start doing. We need all everybody to get an A because that's right. The, the so that's gonna get when real I do bad. mine. Is when I first get up in the morning. Yeah. Yes, that's when we have to do it. When we first get up, we have to do it in the bed. We have to yep. do it in the bed. Okay. So now, what we're gonna do is we're going to we're going to ask everybody to to inhale. Let me let me see. Can everybody turn on their 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 uh, stomach? The video. I, I want to see everybody. I want to see everybody. Can everybody turn on the video? I want to see everybody with this yeah, breath. Can face. everybody turn on the video? Please turn on the video. Yeah. We we, we said what? I said okay, we everybody. Is face. everybody ready to do this breathing now? <laughs> Everybody's ready? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Now, how long should we be able to breathe in? 30 seconds. Longer. We're supposed to be able to breathe in longer and longer. The average person might be able to breathe in for a count of three or four. But we want to be able to get to a count of what? Unlimited. We want to be able to get to a count of 20. A count of 25. Yes. Now, I did tell you all that I had sarcoidosis, did I not? Yes. Yeah. And you do know that Bernie Mac and other people die from the sarcoidosis, right? Yep. It is an incurable disease that I had to cure myself. And in the interim, I developed a super long breath. Just the opposite of the sarcoidosis. And so it shows that all of us can get a longer breath. And the longer breath is what ensures you to have a Rolls Royce car, a Rolls Royce body. So let's get ready to inhale. I want everybody to put, put their hand on their nose. Put your fingers on your nose. Put your fingers on your nose. We open our mouths. Dr. Hopkins, yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, you had your... Oh, thank Okay, I'm sorry. So now, we're going to open just one nostril. I want you all to open one nostril. Okay. And I want you to tell me, can you breathe in that nostril? Yes. Yes. Okay. Then I want you to close that nostril with your finger, and I want you to exhale out your other nostril. Can you hear the air coming out? Yes. Now I want you to inhale through that nostril, the up, the left nostril. Can you hear the air coming in? Can you hear the air coming in? Yes. Yes. Okay, then I want you to close your left nostril, exhale through your right. Can you hear the air going out? 
Yeah. Now and everything what else coming be, out with it. <laughs> well, it should be some other stuff coming out with it. So you should have it some is. tissue there. It is. Now you know what some people call it, right? Yes. What do they call it? Give me some names of what's coming out. You're not gonna say it. Give me some other names. There's a name. But a nice name is Lucas. There's another name. It's a little funny. What do they call it? Booger. The nah. neighborhood. Nah. Booger. Nah. Booger. Nah. How many ever heard of Booger? Why you ain't say Booger's no? Booger. I don't have no Boogers, but I got snot. How many snot. heard of Snot? Snot, yes. Both of them. Booger. Disgusting. <laughs> don't let it be disgusting. <laughs> it's just mucus. <laughs> don't let it be disgusting. But do get it out. Right. So we should have some tissue. We should have some tissue because we should now be blowing that congestion because that's what clogs up the nostrils and start the process of the cold coming into the head. Oof. Yes, I heard someone. It sound good. Oof. Sound good. You should have some tissue. Now, I don't know about yes, you, but I, I got my tissue right here. <laughs> Blowing into the nostril. <laughs> you do the blowing. Where's your tissue? Ain't <laughs> nothing coming out. If nothing's coming out, that's good. Mm -hmm. But it wants you to be going up all up in there looking for it. <laughs> we are. Yeah. Booger hunters. <laughs> we are. <laughs> we are hunters of the matter that could do what? What could this matter do? This Cut matter breath can kill off. you. Well, it can kill you. It can kill us. Yeah. Right. If you're gonna have a Rolls Royce, this is like your muffler system like your muffler system on your car. And you have to make sure that it's working well. In the esoteric knowledge, I was taught by the swamis how to clean the nostrils. They use a technique that they run water up one nostril and they let it out the other nostril. You it's hold your head pot. to the side, you open the mouth and the water come out. They use a pot called a naughty pot. Mm -hmm. Yes. But now we're more modern. Mm -hmm. At the drug stores like CVS, they have a device called the Nafar. Yes. You all heard of this device oh. called the Nafar? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You can I have use... one. Who's, who said that? Who said that? I have one. Uh -huh. Sister Brenda, you yes. have one? Yes. How well do does that work? Do it help your nostrils get the get the congestion out? Yes, because I started with the neti pot. I used to use the neti pot all the time, but then I got the went there and they have the nafas. And your Doesn't, insurance will pay for it. I if you have, uh, yes, yeah, some of them, if your insurance, you have, like if you have those plans where you put in money for whatever. The savings, um, HSA. F FSAs or whatever they call it. Uh -huh. um, healthcare savings. Yes. They will pay for the neti pot. The nafas. Oh, They'll pay for the nafas. Check that mm -hmm. with your insurance, all of you all. All of you all need an affage because it cleans the nostrils quite well. That is, and it, excuse me, how do you spell it? Yes. Um, I'm going to go see if I can get mine. It starts with an N. N-A-V-A-G-E, nafage. Okay, thank you. N-A-V-A-G-E, nafage. Yeah. Nafage. That is some new technology. It's a new device that can help you considerably. Back in the day when I was studying with the Swamis, we didn't have a nafaj. We had a naughty pot. And the neti pot helped to clean our nostrils open. But the nafaj worked, I would say, maybe five times better. What what you think, Sister Brenda? Yes. What you think? Um, and it also comes with little saline pot. That you yes, put in it there. comes with sea salt to help. Mm -hmm. And the sea salt well, goes the, up. The, the Nebler is Himalayan salt inhaler. I told y'all about that helps too with your breathing. That mm -hmm. does too. 
They mm -hmm. need, did everyone get one after yes. Sister Christy took out the time to share that on the, on, on the chat? Yes. Everybody should have one of those. And everybody should get the nafage so that we're cleaning the nostrils so every day the nostrils should be getting cleansed. In the esoteric, the swamis considered your nostrils as important as cleaning your body. Yeah, they mm -hmm. see it as important as cleaning your body, cleaning your colon. And if if we have families, some of you all have children, grandchildren. Do do they not get stuffy? Do they not get colds and what have you? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you are now becoming the priestess in the kitchen. You are the <laughs> one supposed to help keep the family well. So should you not know this? So you can help the family so that the whole family can stay well. Yes. yes. And if you if you're out in a crowd and you worry about COVID, you come home and clean out those nostrils and that throat. Yes. Now, what else could we do? What else could we do to help clean out the nostrils? What else could we do? There is Probe a technique. Dine, iodine. Iodine. <laughs> yes. Yes. But there's a technique where we could take oranges and lemon peels. Oh. Okay. We can heat it up in water. We can put a, a towel over our head, lean over in there, and it pulls the hot vapor up in your nostrils. Mm -hmm. And that will help drain and pull and pull them and make the, the nostrils drain the toxins and kill the microbes up in your nose. Will, will you can let this work the same way? Yes yeah, and no. You, you could, yes and no. Well, you can drop it in the pot. I, yes, you I can. Had, you can drop it in the pot. I went to uh, one time I had bronchitis and I was I'm a drug rep. So I went to a holistic doctor and yes. I had bronchitis mm -hmm. and he told me to go home. Right. <laughs> steam under a pot of hot water with the towel over my head and drop right. the in just before I put my head in for three days and I'll be good to go. And he right. just walked out the room. And yes. It with chamomile flowers. He said, "Put chamomile flowers in the pot. Yes. And let it boil, and then just cut it off. In three days, no bronchitis. I felt like somebody had sat on my chest prior. Yes. To that. Yes. In now three days, three in times three a days. day. It was done. Yes. Now, what is that doing though? What is it doing? You 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 want to understand what is going on here chemically? What is it doing? is releasing the volatile oils up in your head. Mm -hmm. And those oils go up and they kill the microbes. Okay. They kill the microbes. So what else could we have done? Oh, what else could we have done? Excuse me, Dr. Happy. Yes. Uh, I, I just wanted to uh, thank you for uh, the secondary explanations of things. Um, you, you don't just tell us thing um you make us gauge our brains you engage in extrapolative thinking and say okay so you do this i i want you to understand what just happened okay yes. Yes. and in saying that you said it re you're releasing the volatile oils there you go. From the eucalyptus. And it's going up into your head and it's killing the bacteria. It's killing the microbes in the lungs. It's killing it. Thank because you. they they can't live in the volatile oils, but also it's vasodilating your lungs. Mm -hmm. you the go. peppermint does too. And you also could put peppermint oil mm -hmm. under your feet and mm -hmm. on your wrist where it will be absorbed into your skin, just like these new type of drugs that they put on your skin, the patch on your skin to absorb it into the skin. You can do it that way also. Transdermal. Right. So, essential. so essential. yeah, essential oils. These are essential oils. We're, we're in an era now that we're starting to reverse where we used to be. My grandmother used to do all of this and we, we've gotten away from it. So now the young people are coming back to it. They're, they're hearing about essential oils and they're hearing about the benefit of the oils as well as the oils like tea tree oil. How many of you all have heard of that oil? Yes. Or yes. the teeth, mm -hmm. tea tree oil. Yeah. 
to help yes. prevent yeah. bacteria in the throat and in the gums and all of that. Mm -hmm. so, my sister had asthma as a child uh -huh. and my grandmother used to make up this little bag. I don't know what was in it and she wore it around her neck. Uh -huh. And it helped her? Did it help? Oh, yes. Well, see, she had the what knowledge. They it? had yeah, they back had, then, yeah. Yes, they a had poultice? the esoteric knowledge. Back in the day, they wouldn't even let us in the hospital. <laughs> so the mothers knew the knowledge to help keep the family healthy. Yeah. So 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 are so are you all learning some things on here, not just from me, but from these different stories that I'm hearing that we have to put that in the chat. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yes, I get I get kind of excited. I get kind of excited because we have some we have people on here that's having stories, and I'm so thankful that Sister Cato is 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 can appreciate this extra time being taken out to break this knowledge down so that we can understand it like a doctor understands it, mm -hmm. but at the same time so that we can be healthier because we have to do what. We have to become <laughs> healthier if we're going to live to 100. The doctors so don't understand this. I think, the doctors I think don't the understand time, this. I think the time has run, ran out on us. It uh, the time uh -huh. has, you see how, how it goes when we're having fun and learning? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the yeah. time has ran out on us. And I was going to talk about how to use the breath to prevent Dementia. I was going to talk about that, but the time is. Do we need to know how to use the breath to prevent dementia? Yes. 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 That yes. 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 I was going to talk about it, but the time has ran out on us. So now it's too late to talk about it. Oh. It's too late. We got to wait till the. Uh, we'd have to have another yes. meeting. We're not see now, but then we'll see you next month. <laughs> <laughs> No, Dude, this has truly been. That's gonna be Dr. Hoppy's fault if that happened. Yeah, <laughs> this is, has been so educational, and I'm sorry I wasn't engaged to the fullest. I was trying to get our uh, session on Facebook, but Facebook uh, blocked me out. <laughs> wow, <laughs> no. The whole. But, we, but you lecture. were able to record it. You were able to record it. I right? was able to record it. Yep. And so on that note. <laughs>